za Mosem Ozem, jednym z najciekawszych pisarzy współczesnych i człowiekiem o fascynującej osobowości, znamy się i przyjaźnimy od wielu lat. Tłumaczyłam wiele jego tekstów publicystycznych, kilka jego książek i pisałam o nim oraz, mam nadzieję, chociaż trochę zaprzyjaźniłam go z Polską. Witałam go pierwszy raz w 1994 roku, kiedy przyjechał na promocję swojej książki i razem wyruszyliśmy w podróż po Polsce, kraju jego rodziców. Potem mi powiedział, że była to jego podróż w głąb czasu. Wreszcie możemy spokojnie dłużej porozmawiać. Tym razem postanowiłam spytać Amosa Oza, jak wspomina pierwszą wizytę w naszym kraju. Wizytę, której przygotowanie mi powierzono. Zabrałam wtedy pisarza do Kazimierza Dolnego, gdzie przetrwała jeszcze atmosfera dawnej Polski. Był gościem Fundacji Marii Jerzego Huncewiczów. Podejmował go Edward Balawejder. Tam pisarz miał pierwsze spotkanie autorskie w Polsce, w naszym kraju. I tak się zaczęła jego znajomość z Polską. Amos, you have visited Poland several times, but I would like to go back to your first visit in 1994, 19 years ago. It was an opening up to Poland you knew only from your parents' reminiscences. I took you then to Kazimierz, to Maria Kuncewicz's villa, so that you could touch on the surviving traces of the old bygone Jewish presence and get the feeling of the pre-war Poland, whose echoes still survived there. What memories do you have of the journey today? I have very warm memories of this journey today. I remember when I came to Poland for the first time. I expected for some reason to find a very grey country with silent people who don't talk much and I expected Poland to be just forests and steppes and grey buildings. I was wrong. The first thing I confronted in Poland was very, very warm people. You, Danuta, Thank you. and Andrzej, Piotr. and Piotr Wojciechowski, and Eduard Belvedere, and all my friends in the, the Kuncevich Villa. And I remember we came to Kazimierz Dolny, and you took me first thing to the Jewish cemetery. And the Jewish cemetery was destroyed by the Nazi. Kierkot. And then the local people collected tombstones and erected them again, sometimes upside down because they didn't know the Hebrew, they couldn't read the Hebrew characters. But this moved me to tears, this gesture of the local people, not Jewish people, there were no Jewish people left, and they collected and reconstructed those graves. I remember it all my life. And then I remember that we went to the villa of Maria Kuncevich and you told me about Maria Kuncevich and about her visit in Palestine many years ago and about her writing. And the village was such a cozy country house in the middle of the wood that even when I looked at it from the outside I felt warm. I didn't know anything about Maria Kuncevich. I didn't, couldn't read her work. But what you told me about here, and the sight of the house, first the outside and then the inside, gave me great joy because I could imagine the life, the creative life that went inside that house. And I remember we spent a very good evening with Edward Belvedere and later with other friends who gathered there. And we talked. We talked about Jews and Poles. We talked about the sad and complicated story of Jews and Poles. And we talked openly. Yes. And I felt no inhibitions. 
I felt free to say whatever I felt and whatever I liked. And some of what I said was pleasant and some of what I said must have been unpleasant. But people listened and received my words. And then the next morning you took me to the town, to the shtetl yes. of Kajim uh, Dorni. And this shtetl, you gave me a plate with a painting of this shtetl. And this plate is still hanging in my kitchen in Arad. And every day, every day when I'm in the kitchen, I can see on the wall Kajim Dorni looking at me. These Jewish shtetl, Polish Jewish shtetl, exactly as I knew it from pictures and from reconstructions and from museums. And then we went to the old synagogue, which yes. is now a private house. But I could see the traces of the Ten Commandments on the wall, which again moved me very much, because I could imagine the life that existed there and stopped to exist. And then we climbed together on the mountain and saw the marvelous view and heard the story, heard the story about the glory of the ancient kingdom of Poland, the days of old. And all of this, Danuta, is very fresh in my memory and very dear to me. And I am forever grateful to you, to Andrzej, to Eduard, to Piotr Wojciechowski, to everyone who gave me this gift mm -hmm. of the trip to Kazimierz Domni, the first trip to Kazimierz Domni. Thank you, thank you a lot. When we traveled to Kazimierz with Piotr and Andrzej through the Kozienice forests, mm -hmm. you seem to be looking at the passing sites as if they were familiar to you. Mm -hmm. Perhaps they reminded you of the magical stories told by your mother mm -hmm and the landscapes and nature surrounding Grówne, her native town in pre-war Poland. Is it possible that that visit gave you an impulse to write your magnificent book, A Late of a Tale of Love and Darkness? It certainly helped me a great deal in visualizing the Polish landscape. In A Tale of Love and Darkness, there are some long chapters about Grówne, I have never seen Rovne. I didn't travel there. I have a difficulty traveling to Rovne today because there is nothing left of Jewish Rovne. Yes. Nothing is left, no traces, not yes. one Jew in the whole town. So I have an inhibition, a difficulty to travel there. But the road to Kazimierz Dolny gave me an idea about the Polish landscape, the colors, the trees, the open fields, the small houses with the thatch roofs, mm -hmm. all that helped me a great deal when I wrote, <coughs> excuse me, when I wrote A Tale of Love and Darkness, I had those pictures before my eyes, and not only the pictures, but also the smells of the fields and the mm -hmm. forest. Mm -hmm. So it was a great help. Your visit was very important for us here in Poland. It heralded a breakthrough in our relations and our understanding of each other, the Jews and the Poles. You came to Poland at a very special moment, at the beginning of the 90s, after many years of isolation, where you were cut off from the outer world, and you came here as a messenger from that world. We craved for contact also with Israel, and you tried to explain Israel to us, to introduce Israel to us. We listened to your words with attention and fascination. I found a Poland which was eager to talk, yes. waiting for opportunity to talk. People were almost brimming with the desire to talk and to debate, and of course, to discuss Jewish-Polish relations is not an easy topic. It's not a simple topic. It's not simple for Jews and it's not simple for Poles and it's not a simple topic. But we talked openly. And I remember conversations 
with you, with Andre, with Piotr Wojciechowski, with Edward, in uh, the villa of Kuznetsova, and uh, with the small audience that gathered there. That gave me the impression that Polish people, I don't know about all Polish people, yes, but course. the Polish people that I met were full of curiosity and full of desire to know and to understand. To understand modern Israel, to understand how Jews feel today and how Jews live today and what Jews think of Poland today. You told me then that it was time that the Jews and the Poles should stand face to face and looking each other squarely in the eye should start talking. And the best form of talk is getting to know each other's literature. And these words proved prophetic. For many years now a debate has been going on in Poland about our relations in the past, during the time of the Nazi occupation and after the war. More and more books by Israeli writers and historical studies are published in Poland. As a result, we learned to take a more critical view of ourselves. Has this been reflected in any way in how the Israelis see us now? Yes, there is in Israel today less simplifications about Poland. There used to be very black and white simplifications about Poland. Israelis before 89, Israelis simply thought that Poland is an anti-Semitic country, period. As simple as that. Anti-Semitic always. Anti-Semitic before the war, anti-Semitic during the war, anti-Semitic during communist era, anti-Semitic, period. Now, of course, we know better. Also because there are more meetings between Polish people and Israeli people. More Israeli people are coming here. More Polish people are coming to Israel. Books are translated both ways. Yes. Not enough from Polish into Hebrew, by the way. Not enough. More from Hebrew into Polish and not enough from Polish into Hebrew. Mm. But what is translated is enough for us Israelis to know that Poland is the land of Szymborska and the land of Zbigniew Herbert and the land of Czesław Milos and the land of great and deep civilization which is not alien to us. I remember as a little child my parents used to recite to me poetry in Polish. I didn't understand the words but I loved the melody. Yes. They recited it with great emotion and great enthusiasm. Probably Mitzkevich and Tumim, I guess. I don't know. I was too small to remember. Yes. But I guess that is what they recited to me. They knew it by heart. And now many Israelis know that Poland is not black and white. That it's a complex story. That in all times there were different Polish people. They were not all the same. This is a very important realization because it breaks the stereotype. Yes, thanks a lot. copy of A Tale of Love and Darkness, published here in 2005, you inscribed a dedication for me and Andrzej. For my dearly beloved friends, Danuta and Andrzej, who opened the doors and the hearts of Poland to me, and who also opened my heart for Poland, love Amos, you were deeply moved and most grateful for your generous and very kind words. Tell us, what are you taking back home with you this time in Poland? I'm taking with me a great warmth 
of hundreds and hundreds of Polish people in Łódź and in Warsaw yes. who received Nili and me with great warmth. And I'm also taking the wonderful recognition of the Łódź University, which gave me the great honor, which I will cherish for the rest of my life. Thank you.